James, James, come on. My father is a, uh, is a decorated bomber pilot, uh, World War II, Korean War, shot down, parachuted to safety, along with everybody else in his crew. And one time I asked him, Dad, uh, what was going on in the cockpit on the way down? And he said all the men were belly aching and crying and screaming, Captain Brawley, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. And I said, I can understand that, Dad. What were you doing? And he said, solving the problem. <laughs> crying doesn't solve a goddamn thing. Uh, my dad's a man's man. Uh, not a lot of room for uh, weakness or frailty. Uh, not a lot of understanding for differences. And one time I asked him to come see me in my high school band. I was going... <laughs> I was going through my uh, English glam rocker phase. <coughs> I had fairer hair and a uh, shiny red jacket cinched at the waist and open to the navel to frame my sunken English rocker chest. <coughs> and at the end of the gig, he walked over and I said, Dad, what'd you think? And he said, you don't have a shirt on, boy. So uh, after 25 years of therapy and, uh, and a week or two of uh, inpatient crisis intervention, I decided I was going to be a very different kind of father, the kind of father who accepted the differences in his kids. And now I'm a dad. I have two boys, uh, Owen, who's eight months old, and Oliver, who's three and a half, my firstborn. And Oliver's favorite color is pink. <laughs> it's not my favorite color. Uh, but I'm okay with that because I'm a father who accepts differences in his son. <laughs> and uh, it started with the pink crayons and moved on to the pink open-toed sandals. <laughs> uh, went on to my wife's pink nail polish, uh, which I was okay with. And I actually started to think it was kind of cute. And, uh, and I was even okay with the pink barrette which uh, Oliver kept in his pink purse <laughs> when he wasn't wearing it. And then one day last summer, shortly before he turned three, he came to me and said, Daddy, for my birthday, I want a pink bike. And uh, even for me, this was a little too much pink. <laughs> so I said, well, maybe, uh, thinking maybe not. <coughs> uh, to give myself a little time to mull it over. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the real issue wasn't that uh, pink is for girls or that Oliver uh, shouldn't have a pink bike, but that he should have a red bike, <laughs> just like I'd had. <laughs> <laughs> and so I spent the next three months trying to make him come around to my point of view <laughs> with a technique that I'd learned from my mother to make my thoughts seem like his. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so in the case of Oliver, that meant wandering around the park and noticing the shiny red objects <laughs> and remarking, what a wonderful color bike that would make, especially the fire engines, to which Oliver would respond, I want a fire engine <laughs> and a pink bike. And uh, after three months, I finally accepted that I had failed at converting Oliver and that, in fact, he was a different human being than I was and that I was going to buy him a pink bike, uh, which is not easy. Uh, you can get a Barbie 2000 in pink. <laughs> and you can get Hello Kitty in pink. <laughs> and Little Miss Puddin' and Jazz and The Charmer, all in pink but uh, you can't get a pink bike without some looking. It took me uh, 20 visits to virtually every bike shop in Manhattan between Canal and 125th Street until I found what I was looking for, 
Uh, two wheels, one color, no decals, in pink. <laughs> and on the morning Oliver turned three, uh, it was sitting in the playroom downstairs where we were going to be celebrating his birthday. And his friends came over and uh, filled the room. It was decorated in pink. <laughs> pink streamers and purple streamers hanging from the chandelier and a pink birthday cake with pink candles. <laughs> and, uh, and Oliver's pink bike. And uh, after a couple of his friends had arrived, parked right next to it, Jeremy's bike, the Mountain Cub. <laughs> <laughs> Which was dark boy blue with paw prints all across it. And this was the moment of truth. And I could accept Oliver's differences, but I didn't know whether the world could. And Jeremy parked his bike and, and looked at Oliver's pink bike and looked back at his and back at Oliver's. And then he looked at his mom and he started crying. Mom, I want a pink bike. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Oliver has. And uh, part of me had this malevolent glee, you know, sticking it to the tough boy with a pink knife. <laughs> but another part of me thought, you know what, Jeremy? So do I. Why does Oliver get a pink bike? <laughs> we should get one, too. And at that point, I realized the gift that he had given me. It was his birthday, but he had shown me uh, the beauty and the power, really, of uh, being yourself and letting other people be themselves. And uh, it's not an easy lesson to learn. Uh, currently, I'm mulling over Oliver's request for a pink dress, <laughs> uh, which, if I have the nerve to go to the contractor once again and ask him to uh, change the paint color, will soon be hanging up in Oliver's new pink closet. <laughs> Thank you. James.